Welcome back to Web Cafe AI. We do daily ChatGPT and AI videos for your personal and business life. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the app of Delay by Zapier Integrations and seeing how we can leverage that with Zapier and AI. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome again. I'm always looking for feedback, so let me know if you like how the series is going so far. If you're unfamiliar with what series I'm talking about, is we're currently tackling all 5,000 apps found on Zapier's backend and seeing how AI can integrate with every single one. In today's video, we're going to be specifically looking at the app of Delay and seeing how to effectively use that when it comes to ChatGPT. So let's go ahead and rename this to Delay. Uh, by Zapier integration and essentially what we plan on doing in today's video is I want to essentially make it so when you receive a possible inquiry from a client or cold lead we don't instantly respond with an AI generated email rather we use a delay function and the purpose of this is to ensure that the individual that may be you know in communications with you or is a potential lead doesn't feel like it's a automatic or you know not unique message specific to their inquiry right you want to make it feel more human as we know ai is you know going to take up a lot of job spaces when it comes to this kind of stuff therefore one effective tool we can use in this context is the delay function i'm going to go ahead and switch to visual editor here and we're going to go ahead and start with the trigger of gmail and the idea here essentially is we're going to do an event of a new email Hey, continue. We're gonna choose the action. We're gonna do our courses account here. And one thing I want to point out is this doesn't have to necessarily be email. This could be anything. So in theory, if someone tweets at you and you want to add a delay so it looks more human when the response, because no one, you know, you get a tweet, you're not gonna instantly respond within a millisecond, right? Maybe it's a 30 minute delay, maybe it's a 45 minute delay, whatever the context may be, adding delay makes the underlying response more human-like, if that makes sense. So we're gonna go ahead and do inbox here. I'm going to go ahead and test this trigger and we should be getting an example email that I sent from our main account to our courses account here. So we got a possible lead here saying interested in AI automation and then essentially some context of what they're looking for. So in this specific context, it is an individual that runs a restaurant and wants to use AI automation for their social media. So from here, we went ahead and received that email. Say hello. I was looking through your website. You know, the context of the email would say continue with selected record as that is sufficient of what we're trying to do here. And this is where we're gonna add the delay block. Now, now that we have the delay block here, we're gonna go ahead and change the event to delay four. And essentially, you wanna put a value here of how long you wanna wait for the delayed response to the original email. So this is up to your discretion. Whatever your industry standards are, or whatever context you're dealing with, go ahead and proceed with that. I'm gonna go with just a delay of one hour. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one here. And then the unit we're gonna use is hours. We're gonna continue here, we're gonna test this action so that when we receive that possible inquiry, now obviously I could have fine tuned this initial trigger a little bit more, but that is more focused on other tutorials found on this channel. We're just worried about the delay block here. So now when we receive the inquiry, it doesn't instantly respond with our AI generated email that we're about to create here. Rather, it'll wait an hour and then respond with our AI generated email. So we're gonna go ahead and do Gmail here. And we're going to say a oh, reply to email when he continue here, continue here. And then the thread is going to be the thread ID from the original email that we received. So we're going to do custom and come down here and we can just type in thread ID. And I believe the thread ID right there. Perfect. So now it is understanding. Okay. We're referring to the email that I just received. This is the email we're going to be responding to. Um, from here, we're going to go ahead and choose the to email to the underlying email found from there. So we do the from email from the original email I'm saying email a lot <laughs> um, from here. You can add CC BCC. Um, you can add your from name. You can add the from address. Default is going to choose the underlying account email that you put it here. So actually, I could in theory maybe make that a different email. But for now, we're going to just you know respond to the courses email. So we proceed from here and we can go ahead and add our body, which is going to be the information or response essentially. And we can make this between plain and HTML for the purposes of today's tutorial. We're going to keep it as plain text. I do suggest you learning how to prompt and fine tune to make HTML responses as they're going to be way more um, professional in the type of structuring when an individual looks at the email that it responded to. But from here, let's go add our AI here. We're going to add our chat GPT block. Now that we have our chat GPT block, we're going to choose the event of conversation. We're going to continue here, continue here. 
And essentially, we're going to start adding some information here. This is where we're going to be putting our prompts. Username, keep that all as default here. And I personally like upping my model to GBT4 when I deal with more comprehension rather than data manipulation. From here, we're going to do a memory key of email respond delay. Memory key can be 32 characters. Essentially, the purpose of a memory key is to ensure that every time there is an output, it is consistent in its output and there isn't variables that can mess up, you know, as you scale. From here, we can use a max tokens of 250 tokens. In this context is how OpenAI charges you on a usage basis. We're going to say based on this email we received, do semicolon parentheses, and we're going to go ahead and put in the body plane here. I'm going to do subject line as well. I'm going to give basically GBT as much context as possible. The more, the better. I'm not going to do another body plane. We're going to go ahead and do a subject line. So we're going to do subject. If I can spell today's subject, perfect. So now understands not only the body of the underlying email, it also understands the contents of the email. We're going to go ahead and add a context block here. We are an AI automation agency called Web Cafe. Please generate the body of an email to respond to this inquiry and I could fine tune this. I could add more context here. I could add parameter blocks. I could add a lot of information to underlying of how you want to respond, where you want to spawn, the tone you want to respond and so on. But for today's tutorial, for the purposes of today's tutorial, I'm simply just going to have it say, um, I'm going to say the response should encompass thanking them and informing them they will look into this with the web cafe team and provide a quote in the upcoming days whatever the context here may be yours might be as simple as maybe it's a doggy daycare they want to you know enroll their dog in it and you already have preset information that you know you can send on top of that you know we can get really crazy here and with the underlying reply email, you can do an attachment. So maybe you have a lead PDF that you want to add to the attachment to these responses here. But for now, let's go ahead and see if this is sufficient enough. So we're going to go ahead and do continue here. We're going to go ahead and test this action. And then let's see what this response is and see if we need to maybe edit it a little. All right, so it provided a lot of information and really cool. It actually scraped the footer on the original email and found the scheduling a consultation call with our specific agents here, agency. But this is too much information for what I'm looking for. So I'm going to add a parameter here and just say parameter generate just the body. No text before or after. And then let's go ahead and limit this limit to five sentences as the original one actually wasn't bad. It was actually very specific to the underlying inquiry. But sometimes you just want to keep it short and concise when doing business as I've providing too much information can be a little overwhelming. All right, perfect. So as you see here, we got, hello, Sam. Thank you for your interest in Web Cafe AI's automation services for your restaurant and social media needs. Our current team is currently reviewing your requirements and location in New York, New York. In the upcoming days, we'll provide you with a customized quote outlining the solutions we can offer to optimize your online presence and increase organic traffic. And it just goes from there. I mean, this is very niche down, very specific to the underlying response or email where you received. And on top of that, it has a nice little best regards and then waiting for you to input your name here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go back to actions here. I'm going to go to body. We're going to go ahead and input that body we just received here. That's going to be assistant response message. And then since we got the best regards here, comma, Corbin Brown. Perfect. So now that we have our email flushed out here. If you have a lead form or a lead PDF, you can go ahead and attach it there. But for the purposes of today's tutorial, that is sufficient. We're going to go ahead and come down here and test this action. All right. So as you see here, it went ahead and generated. And that's why I kind of said early in this tutorial, if you want to get a better formatted output, learn how to structure it with HTML. But for now, we got our very specific email response to the original inquiry. And we got the best regards, Corbin Brown, so on and so forth. If you feel like you learned something, make sure to like the video. It's completely free and it helps us here at Web Cafe AI. If you want to learn more about AI and automation and more specifically with Zapier and ChatGBT, check out the playlist at the end of this video as we're diving into all 5,000 apps found on the Zapier backend and showing you how you can leverage AI with every single one. Without further ado, 
I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Web Cafe, where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.